Welcome back to our 2022 year in review on the cross-border interviews with Chris Brown, where we bring back past guests of the show and we talk to them about how their 2022 went. Today, I have the pleasure and honor to have our guest from February, that's right, all the way back in February when we first chatted with him, back on the show, the Member of Parliament for Calgary Forest Lawn, and now the conservative conservative critic for finance, and I know there's another part of this uh, title that is added, and he's going to say it, Jazz Raz Holland. Jazz, welcome back to the show. Chris, it's uh, always my honor. Thank you so much for giving me the pleasure to be back on your podcast and your show. Uh, it's it's always great to see you. And as I always say, like my prayers are always with you. And thank you for being you and for everything you do. Uh, the second part to your question was, uh, I'm the Shadow Finance uh, Minister for Finance and also for Middle Class Prosperity. Middle Class Prosperity. I always forget that part. But I, I, let's start off with the basic question here, Jazz, and that is, it's been a long time since we've sat down and we chatted for the show. How has the 2022 gone for yourself before we talk about how the 2022 went for the Conservative Party? Absolutely. So for, for me, it's it's been a busier year than ever before. Uh, Parliament's been in full swing this year uh, without most of the lockdowns, without most of the restrictions. Uh, with things opening up, I've been... I, I've been given the task, but also the great responsibility and the great opportunity of being able to go travel all across Canada to talk to more Canadians, to find out what's going on. Um, And I will say that things have just gotten worse and worse over the year. Maybe we'll touch on that a little bit later. But on a personal note, things have uh, been um, more busier, like I said, than ever. I've also been granted this huge responsibility of of becoming the uh, shadow finance minister uh, as, and also for middle class prosperity, but this portfolio, which was our new leader, Pierre Polyevs, I uh, have huge shoes to fill. But as everyone knows, by looking at every single bill that comes in front of them, whether it's your gas, your grocery, your home heating bill, the price of everything has gone up. So this portfolio is more important than ever now. So let's talk about that right now because uh, we were gonna. I was gonna talk about it a little bit later, but let's do it right now. Things are getting expensive in this country. Uh, I, I will be the first to admit when I go to the grocery store, I, I, I recoil at some of the prices, even for fruits and vegetables, or even just going down the cereal aisle. I, I, I often get you laughed at by my husband when I talk about I collect points, so at the end of the year we can use these points and get free groceries, which I usually <laughs> never do, but. What is the Conservative Party doing to sort of try to help the Canadian people right now? Because I, I watch the question period. I watch House of Commons proceeding. Yes, I'm a nerd. It doesn't seem like this government's listening. Uh, and that's the problem. The government is not listening and only making things worse. Let's see how why we got here in the first place, Chris. The, the same government, this Liberal government, promised when they took office that they wouldn't run deficits more than $10 billion. They completely blew through that promise and spent $110 billion before COVID. During COVID, they spent a half a trillion dollars, 40% of which had nothing to do with COVID. And with the latest Auditor General's report, we've seen how much wasteful spending there was. They you know, they went through this wee charity scandal in the meantime. They gave wasteful um, contracts to people like Frank Bayless, Bayless, who was a former Liberal MP who got a lucrative Single source, $237 million contract for ventilators, not even one was used. So this wasteful spending throughout uh, their seven years of government was confirmed by the governor of the Bank of Canada, led to the inflationary mess we're in today. What does that mean? Today we're seeing higher gas, groceries, home heating prices than ever. We're seeing 1.5 million Canadians using a food bank in a single month, half a million of which are children. This is, this is Canada out of all places. My family didn't move here so that we, that we would see these things happening. One in five Canadians are, are skipping meals. Our government has, our sorry, our party, Conservative Party, has been on top of this costly coalition of the Liberals and, and, and NDP who keep propping them up to stop increasing the costs on everything. We put forward a few motions inside the House of Commons to help the, the bleeding stop that the costly coalition is causing. We said no new taxes on Canadians, no more carbon tax. The carbon tax has not contributed to the environment and actually has made things worse. 
the emissions keep going up and they've not hit a single emission reduction target, yet they broke their own promises of not increasing it. And they're going to keep on increasing it, making things like home heating gas and groceries even more expensive. So we put forward these motions. We also said, get rid of the carbon tax on home heating. And this was something that the premier of liberal premier of Newfoundland and Labrador asked for. And and the Kalsi coalition together voted against all three of these common sense motions that we put forward because Canadians are hurting already. We know that. And we were trying to do anything we could to help keep more money back in Canadians' pockets. And next year, taxes are going up even more. The, the finance minister came out with a, f- a fiscal update just recently. Even in that update, they promised new inflationary spending and more taxes. This is why we voted against it, and we will continue to vote against anything that contributes to inflation and makes life more expensive for Canadians. Are there external factors outside of Canada that are dealing with inflation as well? Or are you saying that it's mostly internal Trudeau government uh, issues that are causing the inflationary uh, issues that people are seeing at the gas pumps and the uh, grocery stores? Well, I'll answer that in two ways, and it's a great question. The governor of the Bank of Canada was clear when he said that if Trudeau had not have spent so much and had so much deficit spending, inflation would not be as high as it is today. The governor of the Bank of Canada also said the inflation we're seeing in Canada today, and these are his words, is homegrown issue. A former, a future potential liberal leadership candidate, Mark Carney, has also confirmed this and said that inflation today in Canada is a domestic issue. And let's look at some other factors when we look at home heating gas and and, uh, the price of everything going up. Justin Trudeau had 15 good LNG projects sitting on his desk when when he took office. He didn't complete even one of those. On top of that, he's canceled pipelines all the way across Canada and introduced a carbon tax. A carbon tax that was confirmed by the public budgeting officer and by the governor of the Bank of Canada, contributes to inflation. If we had pipelines built in this country, our emissions probably would have went down. We would have had a better economy and better jobs. And at a time now when home heating costs are doubling, this is the time when when Canada could have been a world leader in not only bringing the cost of home heating down and not imposing an inflationary failed carbon tax, but also providing the world, the entire world, with good, clean, low-carbon energy. At a time when Europe is asking, and and literally Germany was begging Canada for our energy, Justin Trudeau said there was no business case for it. What did they do? They turned around to Qatar and ended up making a deal for dirty dictatorship oil instead. So the failed policies of this government who brought in the failed Bill C-69, which is a no new pipeline bill, has not only stopped Canada from being a world leader in low low carbon responsible energy and it also uh, the justin trudeau is the cause for not letting the world have that same low carbon responsible energy as well and it's only harmed the jobs here so when we ask the question where is this inflation coming from the bank of canada is clear on that and canadians know as well that it's because of justin trudeau's failed policies is this the main concern that you're hearing at the doorsteps in Calgary Forest Lawn and back when you're back in, on the doorsteps in Calgary? Because I can imagine you're talking about Canadians, but you also represent a Calgary riding, Calgary Forest Lawn. Is this the issue that's uh, most important to people, particularly during these winter months when they're getting those heating bills? And I can tell you, I got my uh, NMAX bill and I was not too, or Enbridge bill, sorry, and I was not too surprised or happy when I saw that bill come in this month. Absolutely, Chris. And look, I'll give you uh, two examples of my door knocking that that really affect me even today and why I'm always opposed to a carbon tax. When I ran provincially, we were running on a mandate. Our bill number one was to cancel the carbon tax. Albertans overwhelmingly elected a provincial government whose number one mandate was to scrap the failed NDP provincial carbon tax. And so that was the and look at the mandate that that government got. I remember door knocking in one of my areas in Marlboro Park in 2019 federally. I will never forget the conversation I had at the door with a single Lebanese mom. When I, when I was walking up to her house, I, I, I clearly remember, remember it was a corner house with a for sale sign on the house. When I walked up to the door, 
she said, thank you, first of all, you're the first elected person running for office that's ever came to my door. She said, hang on a second. She ran back and came back with her direct energy bill. And I'll never forget, she had tears in her eyes. She said, I came from the oil and gas industry. I was laid off of my job. That's why I have to sell my home. I can't afford anything nowadays. This And she blamed Trudeau for for the reason that she lost her job in the first place because he does not support the energy industry or Alberta. I'll never forget the tears that she she had in her eyes and said to me, what is this carbon tax? I've never changed how I've heated my home for years. And now why am I being charged and being punished for something I've been doing for years? This doesn't make any sense. I cannot afford my house anymore. I can't afford this carbon tax. So it solidified even more. And now when we look at emissions keep going up and the liberals have not hit a single emission reductions target, it even further solidifies and makes it more concrete why this failed carbon tax is wrong and the reason and why the the liberals uh, are keeping on increasing it makes no sense at all and is even more of a burden. So yes, this is something we consistently hear, not at the doors, in our inboxes, on phone calls. And we see the result of that, that 1.5 million Canadians are using food banks today, right? And all these things are are major factors. People are skipping meals and choosing less nutritious food because they just cannot afford it anymore. We could probably talk about this for a long time, but I want to get back to the reason you hear about 2022. Uh, This year, uh, the Conservative Party went through a bit of a renewal process. First, you started off with Aaron O'Toole as your leader, then Candace Bergen became interim leader. And now uh, the man you backed, Pierre Polyev, became a leader in, I want to say, uh, September, if I can do my math here correctly. Um, This must be a big win for yourself, but also for the Conservative Party heading into 2023, because you have a a leader that seems to be resonating with a lot of people across this uh, country. What does it mean for you to have Pierre Polyev, the leader of the Conservative Party, in that role right now? Um, I think it's a very, very important. And we got to remember that during this leadership race, um, our party had accumulated 675,000 memberships. That's the most any party has had combined with all the other parties. It is it is a true testament that people are looking for change. The amount of people that created memberships that have never even been a part of a polit- political party before were signing up. We've seen the same people come to these massive rallies that Pierre was holding coast to coast to coast of just everyday Canadians hurting that the same people that couldn't drive to meet their their ailing or dying loved ones because they couldn't afford the gas, people who couldn't replace their shoes, their their steel toe boots because they just couldn't afford that. It was either between safety shoes and eating and heating their homes. So what what I saw throughout the entire campaign for the leadership race was just people who wanted to be heard and Canadians who were hurting because of the failed policies of Justin Trudeau. Having Pierre Polyev in this role today is 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 one of hope. Now people are seeing there's more hope over the hurt that they're seeing from the last seven years. We've seen a complete change whenever we're going everywhere. People continuously say thank you. Thank you for being our voice. The things that Pierre Polyev has been talking about since he's been elected are 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 the things that are hurting people today. When he was saying from day one, control inflation. As the same time when the even the governor of the Bank of Canada, the Canada was saying it's not inflation, it's deflation. At the same time that the finance minister Christia Freeland was saying we were only borrowing this much money because it's such a low interest rate, and Pierre Polyev was saying that someone will eventually have to pay for this at some time, and now we're seeing that today. So having him in this role, who understands the hurt of Canadians, who also has the same humble beginnings as I do. He was born and bred in Calgary. He was born from an unwed teenager mother who gave him up for adoption to two school teachers who worked his way up from ground ground up to be in the position he is today. And when he gave me this role of the finance critic, he was very clear to me. He said, Jazz, the same opportunities this beautiful country gave to you and I and many newcomers and Canadians, that same opportunity is not here today. We have to tell our story and make sure we build this country up again so everyone can realize the Canadian dream that both him and I got to realize 
because of the opportunities of this country and the grace of God. I, I want to ask one last question on this topic, then I'm going to wrap up here, Jazz. And that is, uh, there's been a lot of talk over the last few weeks, few months about privilege, particularly over comments that Christian Freeland, the Minister of Finance, said about canceling your Disney Plus membership to pay for your heating bill. Or I, I don't know the exact words. You're probably you probably have it off the top of your head because it was such an obscure uh, comment. Um, I, I will be honest. Uh, my family, we come from a very privileged background. We we come from. My dad had a good time, full time job. My husband has a, a good time, a full time job. I do as well. Um, the, the the idea of privilege has been one of these things that's been tossed around. Who's privileged and who's not? While you did immigrate to Canada, do you feel like you're privileged now to be in that role as MP and uh, finance critic? Or do you still feel like those humble beginnings? Um, look, every day I walk into the House of Commons or walk into my office, I remember one thing, that this huge responsibility that the constituents, the great constituents of Calgary Forest Lawn have bestowed upon me, the trust that they put in me to be their voice, I have this outstanding duty that I should never let them down and always be their voice. This is a huge honor. The biggest honor of my life, the biggest responsibility I have is to be the voice of Calgary Forest Lawn in Ottawa, not the other way around. To, to always raise the fact that people are hurting today, more and more people are going into insolvency than ever before and into food banks. I have to continue to be those people's voice first and foremost. We have a prime minister who's completely out of touch. Someone who's had a trust, he's been a trust fund uh, had a trust fund his entire life, who's probably never filled up a, a, a tank of gas in his life. And and for Christia Freeland to be the finance minister today and give advice like, hey, we've caused all this hurt and harm by our out-of-control spending, but if you guys cancel your $13 Disney Plus membership, everything should be fine. Is completely out of touch with what Canadians are going through today. When my family came here, we came here with not much at all. It was the blessings of this country and the opportunity this country gave, which people don't see today, that we were able to be successful and be in the role I'm in today. This is a huge honor. We want to make sure as a conservative party, everyone has this opportunity. My riding of Calgary Forest Lawn has about 108 languages spoken. Many newcomers, many people who we know I have, we have a stretch of land called 17th Avenue, which is also called International Avenue. With with newcomers of all different faiths and backgrounds that want to live that Canadian dream of owning a business to have a safer and more secure future for their kids to come here for a better education. We as parliamentarians need to make sure that we're upholding those values that this country used to represent. Canada used to be a beacon of hope for everybody. And that's what our Conservative Party is trying to do is to bring that beacon of hope back to what Canada used to be that we don't see under this out of touch government where the government, the Justin Trudeau will blame, will make name call and um, call all sorts of names to people that don't have the same views as him. Yet he is the same one who gets to jet set around the country and call other people polluters when he's he gets to pollute for free on Canadian taxpayers' dime. And that's why we continuously will call him out for that. And hopefully he gets back into reality because Canadians are hurting due to his out-of-control spending. One last question before I let you go here, Jazz, and that is heading into 2023. 2022 is coming to a close here. 2023 is right around the corner. What do you see as your role and the Conservative Party role in 2023 to A, hold this government to account, but B, also advocate for the people of Calgary Forest Lawn? We will continue to do what we're doing now, is holding this costly coalition, NDP Liberal Coalition, to account making sure that we're standing up and being the voice for all the Canadians that are hurting right now. This continuous attack by the Kwasi Coalition on our democracy, on Canadians' finances, on Canadians' firearms even. These hunters who rely on, on you know, these hunting rifles for their livelihood, especially our First Nations. They, the Liberal government has found a way to attack everyone. And it's all about control for them. We will continue to hold them to account. We need to bring the cost of living down. The government needs to rein in its out-of-control spending and control its government expense because the 
cost of government has driven up the cost of everything. And we're going to continue to fight to have this failed carbon tax canceled to make cost of gas, groceries, and home heating come down. That's what we're going to continue on doing. And if if there by chance to, is going to be an election next year, whether there's talks of that, we will be ready to go to be the voice of Canadians and take charge and be ready on day one to govern this country and put put the power back into the people's lives. Put the power back into Canadians. And that's what our goal is as a Conservative Party. Well, Chaz, I want to thank you. It's always a pleasure to sit down and chat with you. We will do it a few more times probably over the next year as well. But thank you so much for sitting down, taking time out of your busy schedule to chat. And I want to say from the bottom of my heart, man, um, you have become a friend to me uh, over the last year. We uh, met a few times, but thank you so much for your friendship. But also thank you so much for taking time to do these shows with me. Greatly appreciate it. Chris, as always, the honor is all mine. It is an absolute blessing to have a brother from another mother like you in my life and as someone who I also call a friend. Uh, your your passion, your dedication is what, what is what Canada is. And I just want to bless you with many, many your years, more years of service and the same dedication you have. Thank you for everything you do. Thank you for all that you do for your listeners and continue to provide all of us with a platform to be sharing what we all love to do. Thank you. So with that, have yourself an excellent day, everyone. And remember, get it from behind social media and go have a conversation with somebody. Helps your society, helps your democracy, and helps us be a better people. So with that, this has been the Cross Border Interviews 2022 Year in Review with Jazz Raz Singh Holland. Sorry, I'm going to get that right by the end of this. Amazing, you did it right. <laughs> Thanks so much, everyone, and chat to you later.